Hello and welcome to my channel. Here's another winter landscape because it's winter so I'm going to be doing more of those. But even though it's black and white this one is neither in graphite nor charcoal it's actually in colored pencil on sanded paper. So first I'm doing a bit of sketching to work out the composition and I'm doing this with a black colored pencil. Uh, the foreground object here will be this pile of uh, logs and then we'll have some trees in the background some of them are a little bit closer to us than the others there's also going to be a snowy path in the middle uh, the paper I'm using is a 1000 grit wet to dry sandpaper and the pencils I'm using are Faber-Castell Polychromos mostly grey ones, uh, three grades or three types of grey and some black and white but I'm actually going to use black and white sparingly most of the time I'm going to use grey I started by working on this background by laying down a couple of my greys I have like a slightly darker grey which I'm not using yet and then a middle and a very light a warm grey so here in the middle for the most part I use this light grey and then I started blending with my tutilians. These are homemade tutilians and they tend to work pretty well on this surface as long as you're patient and you don't press too hard. Now, the reason why I can do this, here I'm putting down a little bit more of, the, of that light grey here in the middle because I want that area to be a little bit lighter so that I can establish the contrast with some of these trees. Now the top part of the scene is going to be just a little bit darker. So the reason why this works is because of this surface, the uh, textured sanded surface grind down, grinds down on the pencils and allows you to move the material around a bit more easily like you would with pastel pencils. But of course it's not quite as easy as with pastels uh, but it still works better than on regular paper it's a little bit quicker to work than regular paper and it's easier to blend and layer than it is on regular paper and the main advantage is that you can work from dark to light you can add some really sharp fine light details on top of the dark areas as you will see a little bit later but right now I just have to finish this part of the background so that I could focus on the elements in the midground and the foreground so I did a lot of blending with my tortillion until I was sure that, I, that it looked pretty smooth and that it didn't have much texture because this is kind of a foggy winter scene, winter landscape where I uh, want a simple uh, grayish background and I want to avoid texture there. Here in the middle again I'm using this uh, light gray and I'm uh, working on this path, this snowy path which will be going kind of in the middle here and bending slightly towards our point of view. Now the reason why I barely used black and uh, white colored pencil is because I want a gray dull scene with as little contrast as possible so here I'm not really going for a huge range of value but I will still use some of my lightest lights and darkest darks sparingly uh, there's a nice detail here in the foreground it's this uh, group of logs or a pile of logs here and first I'm drawing the general shape and establishing some of the darker, uh, darker areas first and then I'm going to work on some of the details and textures. So this uh, right side is a little bit darker, it's facing away from the light source and the top part is going to be lighter for two reasons. First because it's facing up towards the light source and it's also covered with a little bit of snow and frost but I don't want to make it uh, look too simple so I'm going to try to add a little bit of texture here leaving some of those uh, dark spaces in between, dark details in between so that it looks 
kind of irregular and so that it looks more natural so uh, it's going to be like a frosty snowy scene and a little bit darker and duller with a bit of fog and less contrast like I said we can see some some of these logs here on the right side uh, but these uh, this is in the shadow so I'm, I used darker values there here on top I used lighter values and I even added a touch of white colored pencil to increase the contrast and the range of value in some areas but like I said most of the work is going to be done with these grays now normally if you've been following my channel you know that I uh, do these kind of scenes in either graphite or charcoal, usually in charcoal. Here I'm adding some uh, details here in the foreground, some um, frozen fro uh, grass covered with frost. So it doesn't have to be super detailed, but a few suggestions of some blades of grass here and there will actually get the job done and uh, like I said most of the time I do scenes like these in charcoal but I felt like there are some really nice lighter details here that I could draw by working from dark to light and I can't really do that when working in charcoal I can only do that by using erasers but then I don't really have those fine details and clean edges most of the time so I thought that this surface uh, with this combination of materials would be a little bit better. Here in the background I drew some uh, suggestions of some distant shapes of the trees in the fog and I'm also adding a little bit of shadow here to the right of these uh, logs. So I'm just trying to make the scene appear a little bit more three-dimensional by adding a bit of depth to it. Those trees in the background, uh, they, they don't have to be super detailed. As you see, I, I um, didn't really bother to work out their shape. But I may uh, work a little bit more on them uh, a bit later. But right now I have to focus on these trees which are closer to the foreground. We have, we're going to have a couple of larger, taller trees, especially one here on the, on the right and uh, first I'm doing a bit of blending on this background so that I could uh, start drawing some darker shapes on top of that. So uh, once again the good thing about this surface is that you can put multiple layers so first I put in some lighter layers now I'm going to put in some darker ones to draw these darker outlines or darker silhouettes of trees just a few suggestions of details. Uh, I'm just uh, drawing the general shape of the tree, the general uh, structure of that canopy. These are tall coniferous trees with their conical tapering shapes and the branches growing out to the sides and kind of grouping, uh, rather drooping down at the bottom where they are longer and uh, heavier. Uh, the ones on the left uh, so far are barely visible and I like them that way but like I said I may uh, add a bit more detail to them a bit later. Right now I'm just going to focus on these trees here in the middle and on the right. Here in front of these three I, I may add another one which is a little bit smaller and uh, maybe has a little bit more detail because the closer these objects are to us, the more detailed they are going to appear. And those which are further away are going to be less detailed, more blurry. There's going to be less contrast and texture because of the atmospheric effects. So I'm adding some lighter details to this one, just so that it would stand out a little bit in front of the other ones and so that the scene would, would appear a bit more three-dimensional. This is the light grey that I'm using now on top. It's very light, it's almost white, so I ju I'm just uh, stressing that because I don't want you to think that I'm using a white colored pencil now. I barely use that white colored pencil, it's all uh, lying all there, all over there on the left. And um, uh, I use the black colored pencil a little bit more because I need to establish these shadow areas first so that I would have something to work so that I would have something to work with because 
these lighter de details they wouldn't really stand out as well if I didn't have a darker background so if you have a tree like this if you have a canopy like this um, the uh, the shadow areas which are deeper in the canopy are going to be very dark because they're further away from the light source and they're getting barely any light whereas the branches and those clusters of um, twigs and needles which are sticking out they're going to be catching uh, a bit more light from the light source and the more they're sticking out the lighter they're going to be so first I needed to establish those darker values and then I worked on top of that with this light grey. I picked mostly warm greys to work with because I don't know, I, I wanted a, a warm grey scene because my paper is already I think a little bit more on the cool grey side so I, I thought maybe this would balance things out a little bit and I think it worked but right now I'm adding these uh, lighter details on top of these branches so like I said this is a snowy frosty scene and there's a little bit of frost on all of these branches and twigs and, and these small needles and uh, my approach here is to use a bit less pressure and uh, less of the pencil on those areas which are closer to the middle part of the canopy, closer to the tree trunk, because that's deeper in the shadow. And then as, as these um, branches fan out, as they're sticking out, uh, they're going to be getting lighter and lighter. And on those ends of those branches, I'm going to use more of the light gray pencil, and I'm going to use more pressure to make those parts of the branches which are sticking out a bit lighter than the parts uh, which are closer to the middle part of the canopy. So I hope I hope that I'm making sense because like I said the shadow is deeper inside the canopy and closer to the tree trunk where these branches originate from and the ends of those branches which are on the outside obviously they're going to be a lot lighter both because of this frost and because of the light coming from the light source. You can see how three-dimensional this looks. I'm just trying to imitate the uh, the shape of these branches and needles and stuff, but it doesn't have to be perfect as long as you get the um, as long as you get the overall shape and the general idea right. Uh, and also the, the thing that's really making the greatest impression here is this contrast between the lighter and darker areas. It, it, it's really starting to look like a winter tree and I don't think there's any way you could really achieve this um, on regular paper by working with uh, any of these uh, types of pencils because you simply wouldn't be able to get these nice, clean, sharp, uh, fine details with lighter pencils. And you can see how much contrast I'm getting and you can see how fine these details and textures are. It looks very realistic and there's a great range of value, but not just the range of value, it's the, it's the contrast between these smaller, lighter shapes and the darker background, which, like I said, would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, to achieve. So there are a lot of benefits to using sanded paper, even if you're working on, even if uh, you're uh, working, uh, tr trying to draw black and white scenes, black and white drawings. Most of the time, I use this surface with colored pencil drawings, but uh, I can also use it for some black and white drawings why not if it works so well and it does the paper is cheap you can buy it in any hardware store it's very durable it's almost indestructible you can bend it you can um, it's resistant to water so it's a really good material and it's a good um, alternative for the people who can't really buy artist quality sanded papers such as UART or pastel mat and some others which I've never tried because I can't really find them locally and they're probably too expensive anyway so here on the 
on the uh, right side at the bottom of these trees. I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did under those logs on the left, adding some suggestions of textures of short snow and frost covered grass. But um, in order to make this look complex and detailed, you don't really have to draw every single detail. You can just allow the pencil to work for you, creating a few suggestions of those lighter blades of grass here and there, and then dragging the pencil a little bit to, to see if it can create some unpredictable details and textures. Here on the on this snowy path, I'm maybe going to add some suggestions of uh, tracks in the snow, just to make this area a bit more interesting because it's mostly just uh, light gray, not much going on there. So I'm just going to try to make it appear a bit more detailed and a bit more three-dimensional. And I want this to look like a winding path which is curving away from us and bending to the right behind these trees in the foreground. So I'm just adding more detail here uh, in this uh, foreground area under these trees or below these trees rather. I'm going to have a few more trees here uh, where I'm going to be adding some light details with this lighter grey. Uh, but I'm just adding a few touches uh, with this light grey pencil trying to make this grassy area here a bit more detailed. So now I'm just going to try to finish this tree here and then draw uh, one more slightly in front of it. But first I'm just going to add a few details to these in the background and then uh, I'm going to add a little bit more detail to the one here that is in the foreground. I'm going to use the same approach here working from dark to light and putting these lighter marks on top of the shadow areas which I already established with a black colored pencil I want these to stand out nicely as well and again I'm using a similar approach by using a bit less pressure in those areas which are closer to the shadow area closer to the tree trunk or the middle of the canopy and then applying a bit more pressure and a, a bit more of that lighter value at the ends which are going to be lighter it doesn't have to look perfect I don't know how well <laughs> I've managed to imitate the appearance of those branches, but it doesn't really matter. Here I decided to define the uh, the tops of these trees on the left a bit better, even though they are in the distance, but I made their shapes a bit clearer. And here on the right side, at the bottom, I felt like I needed to make some parts of the of this grassy area of this slope here a little bit lighter because it is covered with a little bit of snow and frost so some parts of it are in the shadow uh, I'm gonna have a little bit more shadow between those clumps of grass and maybe some irregularities in the terrain but I just wanted it to be a little bit lighter so these are just some of the finishing touches. I'm just putting down a few more trees here in the distance just to make the the whole thing a little bit more balanced. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to give me a like and comment. I'm gonna put my signature in the lower right corner here and that would be it. If you want to see longer videos and more content, real-time footage, stuff like that, you should check out my Patreon. But this is it for now. I hope you like this technique and I hope you like this winter scene. I'm going to draw a few more of them. That will be all for this one. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.